Hello, everyone. My name is Carolyn Urena, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of CSU Global Health. We are a medical device company for emerging markets. And the opportunity here is $33 billion. Emerging markets include countries like China and India, but where we see the greatest opportunity is in Africa, where medical device markets are growing at up to five times the rate of Western markets like the United States. The middle class is growing, and with it, so are the expectations for higher quality health care. Large medical device companies recognize this opportunity, but the technology made for the Western world has been unable to be commercialized and scaled in emerging markets. 80% of the world's medical technology is designed for only 10% of the world's population. And the organizations that are designing medical devices for emerging markets are mainly nonprofits and academic institutions. And as you can imagine, they don't have a focus on commercializing and scaling these technologies. And that's where we come in, as a for-profit medical device company specifically for emerging markets. And we've created a six-stage pipeline to take medical devices from design all the way through sales and support based on our experience in Africa and India. Now, each of these stages is unique to emerging markets, but where we've seen most Western companies fail is that design and early commercialization. We design our own products based on on-the-ground feedback and license outside products that do the same. As a small, nimble company, we are uniquely suited to vet these products and to change direction quickly. The commercialization, and especially the tendering process, is very different from the US reimbursement system. And the right understanding of the process and the right connections can make your product the sole source or standard of care. Now, this is a system we've developed for all medical devices in our portfolio. But where we're focusing first is one of the largest opportunities in emerging markets, the $3 billion market of blood in Africa. In the US, we take access to blood for granted, especially in trauma. But in emerging markets, it's unavailable. They lack 40% of the blood that they need. Now, if somebody's bleeding internally, there is another option, and that's autotransfusion. This is the process of recycling a person's own blood that's pooled in a body cavity. But in emerging markets without access to donor blood and without access to proper tools for autotransfusion, doctors across the globe are using a soup ladle and gauze to scoop out and filter and recycle a person's own blood. This is not because the technology doesn't exist, but because it's unavailable. This is a standard of care for autotransfusion in the US. And large medical device companies have negligible market share with this piece of equipment because it's too expensive. There is power requirements that are unmet, and there's an unavailability of replacement parts. We are creating a new standard of autotransfusion with Hemafuse. It's a simple and intuitive device. There's no upfront cost as the device is provided free in a packet of 50 filters. One filter is used for each patient, regardless of how much blood is po processed through our device. And at a similar price of donor blood, we have a $600 million market in Africa. And here's how it works. When you pull the handle up, blood is pulled through a filter. And when you press the handle down, blood is transferred directly to a blood bag to be retransfused. And we already have low volume manufacturing underway in the US and high volume manufacturing planned for Asia. For regulatory, we have a clinical pilot set up in Zimbabwe for the third quarter of this year, which will allow us to start selling in Zimbabwe even before international regulatory approvals are reached. For the tendering process, we have a Ghanaian Ministry of Health official on our advisory board who's expressed interest in making Hemafuse a standard piece of equipment in Ghana. But scale will be achieved through distribution. Distribution in Africa is regionalized into five main regions, and we have established connections in two out of these five regions with specific focus on West Africa. But with two out of the five stages of our pipeline filled in and relationships in the following four, we will, are set to complete this pipeline by the end of 2016, which is when we will introduce our second product already in our pipeline and is also patent pending. That's Revolve. It's a modular centrifuge that can separate blood with or without electricity. It's been tested with blood and field tested in multiple countries, including Ghana and India. We'll introduce Revolve in 2017, 
along with outside products we are licensing into our system. We already have interest from nonprofits, US focused for profits, and academic institutions to take their devices to market. And how we've been able to do this whole process and build these products is with our team of global health experts. I'm the CEO and a serial entrepreneur with experience in nonprofit and for profit ventures in the US and India. Our chief technology officer, Jillian, has been designing medical devices and building clinical relationships in Africa over the past four years. And Katie, our chief marketing officer, is an expert in ethnographic research, and she's lived, worked, and traveled to over 10 African countries. But we've also been supported by our partners. We have raised 400,000 to date, 330,000 of which is non-dilutive, and received mentorship, support, and connections to national blood services around Africa. And for our next stages, we are now opening a round of $1 million seed funding to take Hemathuse through clinical trials and through first sales in West Africa. We see Africa as the next explosive growth opportunity for medical devices and a launching point to make CC Global Health the preferred pipeline for medical devices into all emerging markets. If you are interested in not just a great investment, but an opportunity to enable doctors to save millions of lives, come talk to me afterwards. Thank you.